Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Ask Dave. Fred from Christianstad asks the musical question, do Bruckner's symphonies deserve their popularity with listeners? Oh, what a toughie that is. Well, in some ways it's easy, in some ways it's difficult and complicated. And we'll deal with both of those things. Interesting question, Fred, and thank you for asking it. And I'm very happy that you specified with listeners, because there's a big difference between conductors and listeners, or record executives and listeners, or music people of various sorts, and the intended audience. Uh, first of all, let me say categorically, Bruckner is not popular with listeners. Never has been, never will be. There is, of course, a loud and vociferous Bruckner cult. Um, and that is you know, something I've dealt with in, in numerous other videos. But as far as listeners go, Bruckner doesn't sell. You could ask anybody who works at a record shop. Bruckner has never sold. He does not draw the crowds in, not even in Germany, I have to say. I mean, there may be some corner of the world where people think you have to go see Bruckner, but if there is one, I haven't been there. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe in some spot in Japan, but that has nothing to do with Bruckner. It has to do with who the performers are, what else is on the program. Remember something, when it comes to live concerts, people have all kinds of reasons for going. And generally speaking, they don't go to one concert only. They go to the symphony generally. They go to a series. They get tickets. They go to see a conductor or a soloist or an orchestra. And what they play is a secondary consideration. If you are a hardcore classical music person, I mean really hardcore, you may peruse the schedules of the orchestras that are coming, your local symphony or visiting orchestras, and pick the specific thing that you want to see. But most people don't operate like that. And more the, the point, that's not how it's marketed. The, the performance venues, you know, the Carnegie Halls or the, the, or the symphony organizations, they want to sell you a series. And so, and so they don't care who's coming and what they're doing. They just say, get this series. And so you get a raft of tickets and you wind up going to most, if not all of the things on your series, including Bruckner. That's the way it works. So popularity with listeners is a very difficult quality to judge. When it comes to record sales, um, it's astonishing how much Bruckner gets recorded, given the fact that Bruckner has never been a big seller. And he never, ever, ever, ever will be. You know, it's, it, the reason he's being recorded like crazy, first of all, his anniversary year is coming up next year, and that's going to be total insanity. But more than that, um, everybody was looking for like the next German thing after Mahler that they could latch on to. I've talked about this in my video, why is there so much bad Bruckner out there? Conductors who are not comfortable with traditional sonata forms with Beethoven and Brahms, or who don't do that particularly well, or who are sick of it, like so many people are, found, oh yeah, there's this other German composer guy we can do. And he writes big, long symphonies with big, gorgeous endings. And so we can do them. And so they play Bruckner. And it's convenient and it's easy and it's not even that expensive because his orchestras aren't that huge until he got to the 7th, 8th, and ninth symphonies with the extra brass. But even then, they're not that large. So, so Bruckner is an easy composer to latch on to. And so we're hearing a lot of it. We're hearing much, much, much more of it than his popularity would warrant, in my opinion. Um, because I don't know very many people who are out there clamoring to hear Bruckner's symphonies. Now, don't get me wrong. This does not mean that Bruckner is not worth hearing. I think Bruckner is a genius. I think his symphonies are magnificent. I think they're fabulous to listen to. But uh, that's a different question, isn't it? We're not talking about the worth of the music. Worth, musical value, musical worth, however we judge it, has absolutely nothing to do with popularity, right? I mean, if that were the case, you know, Pachelbel's Canon would be the most popular and, and greatest piece of music ever written. I mean, the greatest, because it's the most popular. Popularity is a, a, an ephemeral quality, which is, which is created by all kinds of factors that have absolutely nothing to do with music, nothing whatsoever. So, so that's a partial answer. In other words, Bruckner is not popular. And we have to 
when we say popular, we have to sort of divorce ourselves from the hermetic bubble that is the world of classical music. I mean, as with, with anything that is the, the province of a tiny minority, a subset of a subset of the general population, the stuff that gets most attention is the stuff that's promoted by the people who scream the loudest. So you've got a bunch of like Bruckner cult people who are going Bruckner, 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 Bruckner. And the rest of us look at it and go, oh yeah, look, all that noise being made about Bruckner. There must be something there. Well, no, there doesn't have to be anything there. There's also a whole now school of academia devoted to Bruckner, probably the saddest group of people you'll ever meet in your entire life. I mean, who could, who could spend their lives devoted just to this one guy and his one, or, you know, 10 and a half or 11 symphonies or whatever. I mean, oh my God, I would go insane. And some of them I think have. So, so yeah, there's a lot of noise being made about Bruckner, but that's not the same thing as popularity. The popular classics have never changed. They are Beethoven and Brahms and Bach and Handel and, and Chopin, if you're a pianist and you, you know, it's not a secret. Tchaikovsky, you know, audiences love Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff. They're 50 billion times more popular than Bruckner. Why? Because they wrote concertos that famous soloists can play. So their music gets that much more exposed. Think about it for a minute. You know, Bruckner wrote these symphonies. He is only exposed as a result of having someone do the symphony. You don't get any overflow into other media. He had no range as a composer. Yes, he wrote some lovely liturgical music. That's an even tinier subset of a subset of a subset of the people who are listening to symphonies. Nobody goes running around screaming, oh, Bruckner motets, kill me now. And I mean, no, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So yeah, the, the ability of Bruckner to become popular is limited by what he wrote, just this, this little group of symphonies. Um, that has not been the case so much with Mahler, actually, because Mahler is, first of all, first of all, has a much wider emotional range. Let's not kid ourselves. He has a, a grander vision of what a symphony can be. I mean, a Mahler symphony is an event. When people say they're doing Mahler's Resurrection Symphony, people show up. They come to see it. It's a spectacle. Bruckner's symphonies are not spectacles. Even the big ones, like the eighth, it's not a spectacle. It's all alone on the program. It's a big deal. It's a sublime piece of music, but it doesn't have that element of theatricality that you get with Mahler, that fun factor. And, you know, musicians love to play Mahler. You, you announce you're doing a Mahler symphony with a community orchestra, and everybody wants in because everyone's going to have great stuff to play, and it's fun to do. Bruckner is miserable. Bruckner is awful to play. Really, string players just hate Bruckner because you're, you're you're spending your life doing acres and acres of tremolos. First of all, you're just like for 15 minutes, and then you play little repeated motives over and over and over. Remember that wonderful part of the Eighth Symphony in the in the first movement development section where the violins are going ya da 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 I used to think, you know, when Joachim's first recording came out, it was on 78s. You know, it's like side three. Yeah, da, 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 da. Then you have to turn it over. This is the disc four. Yeah, da, 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 da. How would you know where you even are in it? I mean, I, I, I've heard, I, mean, I played most of the Bruckner symphonies in community orchestras, and oh, it was a chore because they, you know, nobody wanted to do it. The brass players, of course, loved it. They love Bruckner because they, they have all the fun in Bruckner symphonies. He's brass heaven. Woodwinds, they might as well not even be there half the time. I remember seeing Bruckner's fifth with the Cleveland Orchestra and seeing the principal bassoonist in the back sitting there with his bassoon. I think it was like smoking a cigarette or something behind Carnegie Hall going, what is this shit we have to do? Oh my God, it's so boring. I want to kill myself. They gave a beautiful performance of it. And he was not cognizant of the fact that in the grand climax at the end of the Fifth Symphony, the bassoon has an absolutely independent part. It's going bump, 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 ba dump, bump, bump, ba dump, bump, which of course no one ever hears because everything else is going crazy, but it's an independent part. You know, he's not grateful. 
he's not grateful uh, for the musicians um, unless you're a brass player. So that's another issue too with popularity. And there are a lot of things about him that do not court popularity. Now, so let's let's we're clear on this issue, right? Bruckner isn't popular. However much you may hear otherwise, however many discs get issued and tossed out, he's not popular. It's an illusion. That's that's that. Now, does he deserve to be popular? That's the question, right? Right, Mr. Fred, does he deserve it? The answer is, of course he does. Everything, anything that people enjoy deserves to be enjoyed. I have no problem with popularity. It's not like Bruckner's bad for you or that there's something wrong with him if he were to become insanely popular. Um, that would be lovely. He's a great, great composer who wrote great music. And if does he deserve to be popular if, if indeed it ever happens or when it happens? Of course he will. Of course he will. It's, it's a, that's, that's a non-issue. You can't tell people something doesn't deserve to be be what they enjoy. I mean, you know, do, does 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 you know, do Doritos deserve to be like a popular form of snack food? Well, yes, of course they do. That's a matter of people's tastes, and there's no gain saying their tastes. Uh, you know, and this is not. I, I also hasten to add um, a zero sum game. The problem with, of course, the Bruckner cult is that for them it is a zero-sum game. That is, Bruckner's popularity must come at the expense of everybody else's. It's Bruckner as opposed to this. But in the wonderful world of classical music, we can have our cake and eat it too. Bruckner can have his deserved popularity, and we can just as easily listen to, oh, Janicek or Martineau or Mahler or Mozart or whoever else you want to listen to, and they can be just as popular and deserve it just as much. The deserved part is just... Not a question of which there is a simple answer, but the popularity question is an interesting one. And I hope I have shed a little light on that with this little chat, because I really think it's interesting. It's very interesting. The, the, the concept of popularity in the world of classical music is one that I think is, you know, <laughs> practically meaningless. I mean, effectively meaningless. There is popularity in the classical music world and popularity in the normative wider world. Um, and that's a different thing. So Bruckner is a, a minority interest. And as far as I know, um, he will always remain so. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Connoisseurs can enjoy their connoisseurship. That's what makes them connoisseurs. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.